Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. I've removed the word beginner from the title of the video because if you've got this far I would say you have graduated from the beginner level and you're ready for this video which features one of Excel's most useful functions, VLOOKUP. Uh, it's a very useful function and again it's designed to save you plenty of time and uh, do a bit of work on spreadsheets for you. But before we actually create the function I just want to show you the table of data that we'll be using. The first thing you need to know about the lookup data table is that the first column is called the index column and that needs to be sorted either A to Z in the case of a text list or in this case it's a number list so it needs to be sorted numerically 0 to 9 or lowest to highest. So I'm going to click in that list and then come to my sort and filter button in the editing section on the home tab, click the drop down and just the first option there is what I want, A to Z sorting. And there you'll see my list is resorted correctly. So with that done, let's go back and create our first VLOOKUP function. I'm going to click into cell B2, which is where I'm going to create the function. And the first thing you need to do is type equals, like any function or formula in Excel, and then type the word VLOOKUP. And open parentheses, just like an IF function or other functions in Excel, all the different arguments or different parts of the function go between parentheses or brackets if you prefer. And as I begin to create the function, you'll see that Excel has given me some tips here on the type of information it's looking for. And the first thing we need is a lookup value. Now I'm going to type my code numbers into column A. And in the case of the row 2 VLOOKUP, cell A2 is where my lookup value will be contained. So I simply click on A2 type a comma to separate it from other parts of the function and now it wants the table array so the array is obviously my table of data below and I'm simply selecting everything from A13 down to C17 which contains all the information in the table if you have column headers do not select those just the data and one other thing I need to do to the reference is make it absolute so I'm going to press the F4 key to make that an absolute cell reference and as you may have seen in the percentages and absolute reference lesson that locks Excel onto that particular block of information the table of data so as I copy the formula down that reference will stay fixed on the table which is important type a comma again and the final part of the function is what piece of information do I want to retrieve in other words which column contains that piece of information and this is the description column so it's going to be coming from the item column here so I simply type the number 2 to tell Excel that the information comes from the second column there is one final part called the range lookup which I'll cover in another example in the next part of this lesson but just for now I'm going to close the parentheses and press the enter key and we'll see what we get we actually get an error message at the moment because we don't have a code number so it's saying NA or not applicable. So I'm going to go back to the code box and we'll type a number in, see if we can get a result. I'll type in 1001, press the enter key, and there we get the result. Let's go back and try another code, say 3001. And this time we get the drill coming back. So you can see the function is working correctly. So let's move on and create the lookup for C2, the price cell. Again, equals VLOOKUP the name of the function, open parentheses, click again on the relevant value cell which is A2 in this case, press the comma to separate the parts of the function, we need to select the table data again, again just the data not any column headers, once selected press F4 to make it absolute, type a comma again and this time in the price column I need to go and get the information from the third column in the table so simply type the number 3, again close parenthesis and press the enter key and there we get the price. Now just to complete the row I'm going to come to the total cell there, type equals, click on the price, press multiply on the keyboard, click on the quantity and just press enter. And at the moment there's nothing in there but if I type a quantity in, let's say we buy two drills, we get a total value. So let's just copy that information down, so I'm going to copy the lookup functions down to the remaining three rows. I'm also going to copy the total formula down 
And again, we get error messages because there's no information to calculate at the moment until we put some codes in. So let's put a few codes in, say 2001, 5001 and 4001. And as I enter those, you can see the VLOOKUP function begins to operate and retrieves information from the table. So the only two pieces of information I need to enter are the code and the quantity. Obviously, the formula takes care of the total and column B and column C are completed by the VLOOKUP. So let's put some quantities in there. So let's say we have uh, 10 packs of screws and we have five packs of bolts and 25 packs of nails. And as you can see there, the calculation or the total calculation updates as I put those quantities in. And if we go and modify something, let's say we change our mind about the bolts and we decide to buy a drill, type in the code 3001 and let's change the quantity down to three. So that is the power of the VLOOKUP function. Now I'm going to illustrate some of the things that can go wrong with the function as I've set it up here. For example, if I go to the code entry cell in cell A2 there and just type in something wrong. So instead of 3001, what if I type in 3005? Press the enter key and that's not quite right, is it really? Because it's still bringing back drill even though the code is wrong. So how about we try 4010? Again, a code that doesn't exist. Press the enter key. Well, that brings back nails, but that's also wrong because the nails code is 4001. So the question is, why is that happening? And it's happening because Excel is bringing back something that's close to the result, but not precisely the result. So essentially what it's doing, if you think about that number 4010 and you sort of put yourself in Excel's shoes, it's going to look at the table and it's going to look at 1001 and think, well, that's not very close, 2001. Not quite. 3001, getting closer but not close enough. And in all the values in the table, the one that's actually closest to what we entered is this one. And so it brings back the results from 4001, even though we didn't ask for it because it's close. Now, what's interesting is that even if I type in 4099, it still stays on nails, which is really strange because you think, well, hang on a minute. Shouldn't it bring back bolts because 5001 is much closer to 4099 than 4001? And I agree with you, but this is just the way Excel VLOOKUP functions operate when it's dealing with close matches. And so it will not change until I type in something that is 5001 or above. So it's probably more accurate to say not a close match, but something in a range between the correct value and the next value in the list. So I can type in anything between 4001 and 5000 and I'll get nails. And it's only when I type in something 5001 or above, for example, if I type in 5005, it suddenly changes to bolts. That's something we can use in our favor and we'll look at that later in the lesson. But in this particular example, that's not very good because it allows a person let's say an employee of the company, to type in the wrong code but get the right result, which is misleading. So we want to make sure that they have to type in the correct code, otherwise they don't get the result. So let's just delete our existing VLOOKUP functions first of all. And I'll also just delete the codes for now. One thing I'm going to do before I start to rebuild the VLOOKUP functions is select all the data in my data table again from in this case it's A13 to C17 so once I've selected the data just click into this box here the name box and I'm going to type in there the word hardware press the enter key now what I've done is now named this range hardware so we can use this now when building the formulas instead of selecting a range of cells or typing out cell references or worrying about absolute references, we can just refer to this table by the name. So let's go back to cell B2 and we'll rebuild the VLOOKUP function. And there's going to be a couple of differences, as you will see. So the first part is straightforward, equals VLOOKUP. Lookup value, again, refer to A2. So click cell A2, comma, again. 
and for the table name I can simply type out the word hardware press the comma and now we want the index number that's the same it's column 2 where our product names are comma again and this is the final part that I didn't enter last time and you can see in the Excel tip we've got true equals approximate match this is what Excel defaults to as we've seen it doesn't always give us what we want but false will give us an exact match and I'm going to type in the word false it doesn't have to be uppercase Excel will fix that for me close the bracket or parentheses press the enter key and at the moment we have an error so let's come back and test that then so if I type in 1002 which is a code we know that doesn't work or shouldn't work press the enter key it doesn't work but if I'm accurate 1001 it does work so by using the word false and if I go back to the function by using the word false at the end the fourth part of the VLOOKUP we're forcing Excel to only respond to precise entries in column A the code column so let's go ahead and complete that so I'm going to complete the price VLOOKUP and I'm going to use another feature in Excel to help you build your VLOOKUP functions if I come to the formulas tab and you'll see in the function library we have lookup and reference just click on that and if we see right down the bottom of that list there's VLOOKUP click on that and we get a dialog box appear that will help us build our lookup function so the lookup value again I simply need to click in the appropriate cell A2 come down to table array now here instead of typing out the table name I'm just going to press the function key F3 this brings up the paste name dialog as you can see and any named arrangers in my worksheet will appear here so there's the only one I have hardware just click on that click OK and the name goes in to the cell click the next part and the column index number is number three which is where my prices are and here the range lookup again type in the word false and again remember this forces Excel to find exact matches in the table click OK and there's the result Again, I'm going to copy these two cells down, click and drag. So let's go through and we'll type in some exact codes and some inexact codes. So 2001 should work, 3005 shouldn't work, and 5001 should work. So you can see there, if someone types in the code incorrectly, they will get a, an error message and that will force them to look at that and maybe think about the entry and fix it to the correct entry which in this case is 3001 press enter and we get the right result so here we have another example where a VLOOKUP function would be useful uh, it's a fairly typical example we have some student results from a test and we want Excel to work out the grade for us now in the previous part of the lesson we saw how having a close match can be a problem when what you actually want is a result returned based on an exact entry in your value cell but here we want Excel to give us a result if it falls within a range of numbers it'll become clearer when I create the VLOOKUP function but before I do that I'm going to select the cells from E4 down to F10 in this case which is my table of VLOOKUP data again excluding the column headers and I'm going to create a named range now previously I would just click in the box here and type the name the name box just to show you an alternative way of doing that if you go to the formulas tab and come across the defined names section click on the drop down under define name and click define name and then you get the option here to type the name and make any comments as well if you want to so I'm just going to call this table grades and you'll see I have the option of applying that to just this worksheet or the entire workbook I'm just going to leave it as a workbook and click OK so let's go and create the VLOOKUP click into cell C4 in this case type equals VLOOKUP I'm sure you're familiar with this by now open parentheses click on the lookup value which is obviously the result for this particular student in cell B4 type a comma and now I want my table array which as we know is the named range grades I could type grades here but I'm going to actually come up to this option here I'm still in the formulas tab in define names you'll notice the use in formula is active click on the drop down we have our two named ranges here I'm going to click on grades and that just drops the name into the formula type a comma again 
The index number is obviously the column where the grades appear, so it's going to be column 2. In the case of a close match, you can either exclude the range lookup or type the word true. I'm simply going to exclude it, close parentheses, press the Enter key. So I'll just click back on that formula so you can see it in the formula bar there. And with this, Excel has gone to the table, found the value between 50 and 60, and it's returned the corresponding grade from the row with the number 50 on. So I'm going to copy this function down now, and you'll see how the results appear on the grade list. So we'll see there 70, for example, occurs between 60 and 75, so it's obviously grade C. If we look at the higher values, 80 occurs between 75 and 90, so we get B. And we don't have anything that is in the A plus range, but if I just go to Mary, and let's say she did incredibly well, and got 98 out of 100, press the Enter key, and that's A plus. So even though 98 doesn't match 95, it's the last number in the list that's closest to the score from the test. So A plus is returned. I hope you've seen in this lesson that VLOOKUP is not only a powerful tool, but it's also very flexible. And I hope you can apply this function to the worksheets that you're creating. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.